Hello and good afternoon, Berks County Quarantine Open Mic. You are here watching Children's Time with Snow White. I'm so happy to be here again. I'm going to continue the story that I started last week called Junie B. Jones Smells Something Fishy. And we're going to be finishing this book up today and I'll be able to share a song or two for you at the end. I hope you enjoy. So, the last time that we were together, Junie B. Jones, I believe, ah yes, they were talking about Pet Day and what Junie B. was going to be having to take along to Pet Day because she has a dog and dogs aren't allowed in school. So, how about we continue with Chapter five, Catching Friends. <clears throat> I watched this little worm very careful. He wiggled himself into the dirt. I tapped the glass. Yeah, only there's a problem. Now I can't see you anymore. And so what fun is that? I asked. I took off the lid and put my lips in the jar. Come out. Come out, wherever you are, said Junie B. Then I waited very patient, but the worm did not come out. Hang in there. Don't you even know I'm talking to you? Then all of a sudden, my brain thought of something very important. Of course he didn't know I was talking to him. How could he know I was talking to him if he didn't even have a name? I quick closed my eyes real tight and I tried to think of a worm name. Pretty soon, my eyes springed wide open. Noodle, I said real thrilled. I will name you Noodle, cause noodles and worms are twins practically. I yelled in the jar again. Here Noodle, here noodly little Noodle. Just then, mother peeked her head in the kitchen door. What's all the shouting about in here? Who's Noodle? She asked. I pointed to my dirt jar. Noodle is my worm, I said. Only he crawled away into the dirt and now he won't come out. Not even when I call his name. Mother looked in the jar. Hmm, maybe he's taking a nap, she said. Or maybe he's just exploring his new home. I tapped on my chin. Maybe, I said, or maybe he might be looking for some friends to play with. Just then, I did a gasp. <gasps> mother, mother, I bet that's it. I bet little Noodle is lonely in there. I bet he's looking for friends. I zoomed to the closet speedy fast, and I put on my sweater. Hold on, little Noodle, hold on, hold on, because I can help you with this problem, I think. After that, I grabbed Noodle's jar and me and him zoomed outside to the garden again. Friends do not come easy. First, I tried to catch a butterfly, but it quick flew away. Then I tried to catch a grasshopper, but it wouldn't stand still. Also, I tried to catch a cricket and a gnat and a lizard, but those guys wouldn't cooperate either. You know, I bet that Junie B. Jones doesn't realize that if you sing, like a Disney princess. These critters usually come running right towards you. And they usually know that when I sing for them, that I usually am wanting some sort of help, especially when I'm doing my cleaning for the seven dwarfs. But I suppose that Junie B doesn't know that she can sing and that these creatures would come. Let's see what she does next. <clears throat> Finally, I sat down in the grass real glum. I'm a flop at this job, I said. Only just then, I saw something very wonderful. And it's called three ants were walking in the grass and they were carrying a cheese puff on their heads. My heart got very thumping. Noodle, hey Noodle, I found friends and they brought a delicious cheese snack. After that, I picked up the ants and the cheese puff and I dropped them right inside the jar. And that's not the only good news 
because just then a big buzzy fly landed right on my sweater sleeve and I swatted him in the and I swatted him with the jar lid and he did not even die that much. I put him in the jar too. Then I danced and danced all over my yard because now Noodle had friends and I had pets for pet day and that is called a happily ever after. Junie B has very interesting ideas about what's a happily ever after, I think. <clears throat> Chapter six, Sparkle. I run into the house very thrilled. Mother, mother, I found friends for Noodle. I found Buzzy the swatted fly. Plus, I also found three ants and a cheese puff. Mother looked at the friends. Oh my, she said kind of soft. I know it, mother. I know it is oh my. Noodle will love these guys. I know he will. After that, I quick took the jar to my room and I put it on my bed and I waited for Noodle to meet his new friends. I waited the whole entire afternoon. Only Noodle never came out. At dinner time, I walked to the kitchen very slumping. Noodle is hiding, I said. Plus, the ants ate the cheese puff and Buzzy the swatted fly bit the dust. Mother lifted me into my chair. She put stew on my plate. Yeah, only how can I even eat stew? Cause I'm depressed, I tell you, I said. Just then someone opened the front door. It was my grandma, Helen Miller. She was bringing the ice chest back. And guess what? There was a giant fish in that thing. My eyes popped out of my head again. <gasps> grandma Miller, Grandma Miller, that fish is almost as big as me, I said real thrill. Grandma Miller looked proud of herself. It's called a large mouth bass, she said. He's a beaut, isn't he? He is, Grandma. He is a beaut. Look at how shiny his skin is. Let's name him Sparkle. Want to, huh, Grandma? Want to name him Sparkle? Grandma Miller laughed. Name him whatever you want, sweetie, she said. We've got three more in the truck just like him. Come on, everybody. Come see them. That's how come Mother and Daddy went out to the truck. Only not me, because I wanted to stay with Sparkle, that's why. I waved at that guy in the ice water. Hello, Sparkle, how are you today, I said. I am fine, are you fine too? I patted his head. Want to swim, Sparkle, huh? Want to swim in the freezy water? After that, I got down on my knees and I swimmed him all around. I wish you were my fish, Sparkle. If you were my fish, I would take you to school for show and tell, and you would be the star of the show. Just then, I got goosebumps on my skin, because that was the bestest idea I ever heard of. Sparkle, hey Sparkle, maybe you can come to pet day with me. Because you are way better than my pet jar. After that, I lifted that big guy right out of the water. Only too bad for me because Sparkle fell on the floor. Oh dear, I said, you are a chubby one, Sparkle. And so how will I ever get you to school? That's what I would like to know. Just then I saw Tickle's dog leash. It was hanging over the door. I danced all around the kitchen. A leash, Sparkle. A leash is the answer to our problem. After that, I quick grabbed the leash and I put it over Sparkle's head and I pulled him all around the floor. He slided as easy as pie. Just then, the back door opened. Chuny B. Jones, what in the world do you think you're doing? It was my mother. She was back from the truck, apparently. I think I'm sliding Sparkle, I said, kind of nervous. We're practicing for pet day. Mother shook her head real fast. Oh no, no way, Missy. You are not taking that fish to pet day, she said. Yes, Mother, yes way. I have to, I have to take Sparkle. I love this slippery guy. Please, Mother, please, please. Mother did some deep breathing. Then she sat down next to me and she made her voice not yell. Okay, I want you to listen to me very closely, she said. 
I know you like this fish, and I know you would like to take him to school for pet day, but pet day is for live pets, Junie B. And maybe you don't realize this, but the thing is, honey, Sparkle is dead. I nodded my head. Not a problem, I said. Mother did a frown. Not a problem? What do you mean, not a problem? Of course it's a problem. You can't take a dead fish to school. I raised my eyebrows at her. How come? Is it in the rules? I said. No, of course it's not in the rules, said Mother. I smiled. Good, then I can take him, I said. After that, Mother stared at me a real long time. Then she closed her eyes and she put her head on her placemat and she didn't eat her stew. Poor mother. Junie B seems to be a little bit of a handful, don't you think? <laughs> Chapter seven, sneaky Grandma Miller. Grandma Miller stole the sparkle. She waited till I took my bath. Then she sneaked into the kitchen and she took sparkle home with her. I run all around in a tizzy. She stole him. Grandma Miller stole Sparkle, and nobody even stopped that woman. Mother said to me in a quiet voice, Your grandmother did not steal Sparkle, Junie B. She caught him at the lake. That fish was hers, remember? She picked me up and carried me to bed. You're just going to have to accept this, Junie B, she said. You cannot take a dead animal to school. For pet day, end of story. After that, she kissed me goodnight on my cheek. And guess what? I did not kiss back. On Monday morning, Grandpa Frank Miller babysitted me for before school. I did not speak to that guy, because he is married to the thief of Sparkle, that's why. I ate my breakfast very silent. Grandpa Miller looked at my pet jar on the counter. Boy, oh boy, look at those ants, would you, he said. They're always on the go, aren't they? I did a frown, though I thought very careful because the cheese puff was already gone. And so what could they be carrying? Just then my eyes got big and wide because I had a big feeling about the situation. That's why I run to my jar speedy fast. Oh no, I hollered. Oh no, oh no, it's Buzzy the swatted fly. I quick took off the lid. Put him down. You put him down right now, and I mean it. The ants did not obey me. That's how come I zoomed them right out to the grass, and I shake them right out of my jar. Go home, ants, I hollered. You go home this very minute. The ants went home. I brushed my hands t together very proud, because I saved Buzzy, that's why. After that, I reached in the grass and picked up my jar. Only something did not feel quite right exactly. I looked inside of it. Oh no, it was empty. All of the dirt was gone and Noodle was gone too. Noodle, I shouted, Noodle, Noodle, where are you? Where you. Then I crawled all over the grass and I searched and searched, but I never saw Noodle again. Oh, that was kind of sad. Chapter 8, A Surprise in the Freezer. I cried on my bed a real long time. Pep Day is ruined. It's ruined, ruined, ruined. Grandpa Miller looked all over the house for pictures of Tickle. He taped some on cardboard and brought them to my room. Look, he said, this doesn't look too bad, does it? I raised my sagging head off the pillow. Then I looked at the pictures and I patted him real gentle. You did your best, old man, I said very soft. Grandpa Miller rolled his eyes up at the ceiling. I looked up there too, but I didn't see anything. After that, I got out of bed and I dressed myself for school and I walked to the kitchen very slumping. Grandpa Miller made me a turkey sandwich. 
What do you want to drink? He asked. I did a sad sigh. Orange juice, please, I said. Grandpa Miller opened the refrigerator. Hmm, orange juice. Orange juice? I don't see any orange juice, he said. I went over and helped him look. We couldn't find the orange juice anywhere, not even in the freezer. Just then, my grandpa moved the frozen vegetables. And guess what? My heart almost stopped breathing because I couldn't believe my eyeballs. That's why. Grandpa Miller, Grandpa Miller, do you see what I see? Do you, huh? Do you, do you? Grandpa Miller looked very closely. Well, I don't see any orange juice, that's for sure. I danced all around the room. No, Grandpa, not orange juice, a pet. I see a pet for pet day. See it, Grandpa? See it in there? Then I clapped my hands real joyful and I skipped to the freezer and I grabbed it right off the shelf. Chapter nine, my proudest honor. Pet day in room nine was very exciting. There were cages with furry animals and bowls with fish. Plus, also, there was a snake and a hermit crab and a rooster. That rooster is mine, said that meanie Jim I hate. He will peck your head off if I tell him to. He will peck it right into a nub. I made a sick face because a nub does not sound pleasant. Just then, Lucille skipped over to me. Look, Junie B, look at my darling riding outfit. See my darling riding hat and my darling riding pants? And look, Junie B, here's a picture of my darling pony. And look at my darling riding boots. They are genuine rawhide cowhide. I smiled very admiring. You are a beaut, you, Lucille, she said. Grace pulled on my arm. Junie B, Junie B, come see Slicky. He's my goldfish, remember? I bought him a brand new bowl. Come see it. Just then, my teacher clapped her loud hands together. Boys and girls, everyone needs to sit down right now. What an exciting day we're going to have in room nine. We hurried up and sat. Mrs. pointed to the pet table in the back of the room. Who would like to go first, she asked. Who would like to introduce us to their pet? Me, I shouted. Me, me, me. Then I springed right out of my seat. But Mrs. said, sit down to me, and she called on crybaby William, because that guy never springs, that's why. William went to the pet table. He pointed to his bullfrog named Wendell. I just got him on Saturday, said William, very shy. Mrs. smiled. Well, he certainly is a handsome bullfrog, she said. Would you like to take Wendell out of his tank for us, William? Would you like to show the children how to hold a bullfrog? Then William's face got whitish and sickish, and he started sweating a real lot. That's how come Mrs. had to put a wet towel on his head, and she said he didn't have to hold Wendell. Charlotte went next. She showed us her bunny named Slippers. She carried him all around the room, and she let us pet his head. Slippers smelled like stinky feet. After Charlotte came Polly Allen Puffer. He showed us his parrot named Pirate Pete. Only too bad for Pirate Pete, because he kept on saying a bad word, and he wouldn't even stop, and so Mrs. had to send Pirate Pete to the office. After that, lots of children showed pictures of their dogs and cats, plus Jamal Hall showed us his lizard named Gizzard and a boy named Ham show us, showed us his hamster named Elvis. Finally, I raised my hand real calm. It's nice to see you being so polite, Junie B. Would you like to go next, said Mrs. <clears throat> Did you bring a picture of your dog? I shook my head. No, I said, cause I didn't want to bring a picture, remember? I wanted to bring a real, actual pet. Only too bad for me, because Mother said no raccoon, and then my Grandma Helen Miller stole Sparkle. Plus, also I lost my noodle, and then we couldn't find the orange juice, and so that's how come my Grandpa moved the frozen vegetables, and boom, I saw a pet in there. 
so I put him in my backpack, and here he is now. After that, I quick unzipped my zipper pocket, and I held up my pet for everyone to see. Fish stick, I said real delighted. I named him Fish Stick because he's a fish stick, of course. Room nine stared and stared. Then all of a sudden, everyone laughed at once. You goony bird, yelled that meanie Jim. Fish sticks aren't pets. Fish sticks are dinner. I felt very shrinking inside. But, but fish sticks have to be pets, right, missus? Right, I asked. Because fish sticks are fish, aren't they? And fish are pets, right? Mrs. was hiding behind her hands. She peeked at me between her fingers. Um, yes, sure, of course fish are pets, she said. I felt a teeny bit better. So then fish sticks can be pets too, right, I said. Mrs. hided a little while longer. Then finally, she took a big breath and she got up from her desk. Well, let's see. Maybe we should see what the dictionary has to say about this, she said. After that, she took out her dictionary and she looked up the word pet. Pet, she said, any tamed animal that is kept as a companion. Okay, she said, now that we have the definition, let's see if fish stick fits the bill. She looked at me. Junie B, is fish stick tame or is he wild? Tame, I said. Fish stick is very, very tame. He won't even peck your head into a nub. Okay, good, said Mrs. And would you say that fish stick is a good companion, Junie B? Can you take him lots of places? And does he behave himself pretty well? Yes, I said. Fish stick can even go more places than my dog, probably. Because I can put fish stick right in my backpack. And he doesn't even say a peep. Mrs. smiled real happy. Then she walked to my table and she shaked my hand. Well then, congratulations, she said. According to the dictionary, fish stick is definitely a pet. After that, she took fish stick out of my hand and she carried him to the pet table. And guess what? She put him right next to Slicky. Grace, hey Grace, now our fishes can be friends just like us, I said real delighted. Just then, I heard a croaking noise. It came from Wendell, the bullfrog, I think. Then Wendell croaked even louder, and that made Slicky, the goldfish, jump in his water. And that made the rooster cock-a-doodle-doo. And that made Slippers thump his loud foot. And then his cage door accidentally came open, and he hopped right off the table. Oh, no, yelled Room 9. Oh, no, oh, no. Then all of us chased slippers all around the place and he hopped and hopped until Mrs. caught him in the trash can. It was the excitingest adventure Room 9 ever had. And that's not even the best part of Pet Day because at the end of school, Mrs. gave out special ribbons to all the pets and the rooster got the screechiest, Pirate Pete got talkiest, Slicky got the bubbliest, and Slippers got most rascally rabbit and fish stick got most well behaved. I did a gasp at that wonderful thing. Then I shaked and shaked Mrs.'s hand. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, thank you, cause this is the proudest honor I've ever imagined. Mrs. laughed. She said me and fish stick made her day. Then she gave me a hug, and that is called a perfect ending. Well, that was the end of our story for today. Junie B. Jones smells something fishy. So, hopefully, I saw that Jessie's phone right here is a little low on battery, but I think that I will have time to offer you this nice song. So, I'm going to borrow a song from one of my good friends and fellow Disney princess, I guess technically a queen though, I'm going to sing a song by Miss Elsa called Into the Unknown. I 
can hear you, but I won't. Some look for trouble while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away. Oh, oh. You're not a voice. You're just a ringing in my ear. And if I heard you, which I don't, I'm spoken for, I fear. Everyone I've ever loved is here within these walls. I'm sorry, secret siren, but I'm blocking out your calls. I've had my adventure. I don't need something new. I'm afraid of what I'm risking if I follow you into the unknown. Into the unknown, into the unknown. What do you want? Cause you're keeping me awake. Are you here to distract me so I make a big mistake? Or are you someone out there who's a little bit like me? Who knows deep down I'm not where I'm meant to be? Every day is a little harder as I feel my power grow. Don't you know there's part of me that longs to go into the unknown, into the unknown. Are you out there? Do you know me? Can you feel me? Can you show me? Are you going? Don't leave me alone. How do I follow you into the unknown? Well, that was a whole lot of fun. I hope that you enjoyed Stories and Songs with Snow White today during Berks County Quarantine's open mic children's time. Join us next weekend and we'll have some more children's time fun. Goodbye!